Thank you for joining us today and joining the Author Spotlight Show. My name is Gail Watson, and I'm founder and CEO of Women Speakers Association. And as part of running a global community uh, in 120 countries, it is my privilege that I get to connect with some great women from around the world who are doing amazing work. It's an important time today for women to step into finding and owning their voice. And it's even more exciting when they put her words onto paper uh, so that we can easily read them and share them. Today, we have a very special guest, a uh, three-time best-selling author, the amazing Anita Russell. Welcome to the show, Anita. Thank you, Gal. It's fantastic to be here. Yeah, I, I love all that you do. I love your passion. I have enjoyed many great conversations with you. Um, and uh, I'm really happy that you could be here today because you have written another, your third piece. Congratulations on being a Thank three-time you. best-selling author. Your third piece, and I love the title of this one, um, Musings of a COVID-19 Baby. Yes. So there's a whole entire story behind how that um, came to be. Um, I am, when, whenever it comes to my writing, I'm always just very conscious of things that are going on around me. What am I listening to? What are people saying? And, and all of that. And that story came out of a conversation that I actually had with my, uh, my daughter, Olivia. And she has a son by the name of Cairo. And he, at the time um, when we were having this conversation was still an infant. And it happened shortly after uh, the murder of George Floyd. And so, you know, that was a very heightened emotional uh, time and, and all of that. And my daughters, both of my daughters actually were preparing to go out and, and march. Uh, we live in the city of Pittsburgh. So it was a protest that was set up in the city of Pittsburgh. And as Olivia was preparing to go out, uh, she called me into uh, the room and we had a conversation. And in the conversation, we realized that between from my mom's generation to my generation and now to her and her sister's generation, we protested. And we were essentially protesting for the same thing. And that same thing is our birthright to be able to exist in brown skin, in black skin, in black and brown skin and, and all of that. And, but the, the, the most profound aspect of that uh, conversation was the fact that she asked me if I thought her baby, Cairo, who was an infant at that time, if I thought he was gonna to have to protest as well. And it just kind of broke my heart. Um, the, even considering the possibility that he might have to do that. And so, um, you know, fast forward when it, I came down and I was trying to decide what do I wanna write about? And I decided that I was gonna share that story. And when I wrote the, 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 that story, I wrote it through his mouth. So it's actually the voice of Cairo that is speaking in the story. That's amazing. I remember that time and that conversation because I had that conversation with you. And out of all the conversations that I had had with people, yours stuck with me the most. Mm. Yours is the one that I shared with others because it really put into perspective that generational aspect, that generational fight. And um, I hope you're proud of, you know, the work that you and your generations before you have put in, because oh. as we were literally just discussing, um, a new page has been turned. Yeah, exactly. I look at it from the standpoint of, um, my theme for 2013 is preparing for a new era. And I look at this place that we're in right now because the conversations that are being had are much bolder conversations. And I think it's also because of social media that we're able to now have all of these different uh, conversations. I mean, uh, you know, all of the different tools and everything to allow my voice and the voice of other black women who are uh, parents or their grandmothers or sisters or whatever, that our voices are being heard. And now our faces are being seen. And so a lot of the things that 
were a part of us generationally that we were aware of, but a lot of other uh, individuals or groups or whatever didn't really understand or know what all of this means for us. And so to be able to have these various platforms to get my voice out there and say, I hate racism and everything that I'm doing now in terms of preparing for a new era, I'm looking at this new era of anti-racism. And so that's kind of where my focus is right now. I love that. Now, your story that you share, um, musings of a COVID-19 baby, uh, I mean, it, it, it follows the whole line of resilience. What do you want readers to take away when they read your story? What I want them to take away from, even though I wrote it in um, the voice of my grandson, it's actually my voice. And one of the things that has always been really important to me, and this is what I learned from my mother. My mother was like a warrior uh, to me. And she, you know, just the way she carried herself from that perspective, from being an activist and, and all of that, and just having this, this very forward thinking way of looking at things because it's like where we are right now and whatever that situation is, whatever that racism, whatever that violence, there's always the possibility that it won't be like that tomorrow. And when I look at my grandson, Cairo, and I also have a, a 13 year old grandson, so it's, but so it's really the both of them. When I look at them, I know the quality of life that I want them to have. And I don't want the color of their skin to be a threat to them. Cause it's not like they could take it off. You know, I don't want my grandson um, earlier this year, you know, everybody's all in the same house now under COVID-19 and everything. And this one particular time he was outside, just outside on, on, you know, in front of the house or whatever. And he came back in rather quickly. And I asked him, why did he come back in? And he told me because the police came down the street. I don't want my grandson to have to be on constant radar when it comes to him like being in the presence of police as an example. I don't want neither one of them that that is part of their story. I want them to be able to walk through the world and just walk through the world with their dreams and their aspirations and all the things that they were put on the planet to do without this extra stuff that holds them down, that defers their dreams and breaks their hopes and, and all of that. So that's where resilience comes in for me. I saw that resilience in my mom and I'm, you know, I want to impart that same resilience to my daughters and then that gets imparted into their children because resilience, quite frankly, is how we've survived all of these generations. Well, you are a true example of someone who is, has found her voice and is owning it and is definitely flying with it, you know, and, and I was just thinking as you were sharing your passion about your grandsons and your motivation uh, of why you're doing what you're doing, the, the fuel um, mm -hmm. to your fire. I mean, you are truly that wind beneath their wings for sure. And, and you do that for so many people. I mean, you run a business called The Place to Soar. Tell us about that and what you're doing uh, for others. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The Place to Soar is actually the core business of everything that I do. So everything that I do, uh, it, it ultimately flows back to why I established that company and why is it called the place to soar? Like where did that uh, come from and everything? So the, the word soar is actually an acronym that stands for step out and redesign. And when I look back on my own um, uh, progression in my life, that came to me, that concept came to me when I stepped out of corporate America back in 2013, I made a crazy, bold kind of choice that I was going to leave corporate America and just kind of do my own thing. And in order for me to do that, one of the first things I realized is that you've been in this corporate life for like, I would have hit 23 years if I had stayed in, in 2013. You've been in this corporate life and now you're talking about you want to be, think, act, behave, 
like an entrepreneur. And so you have to redesign yourself. You have to repackage yourself and take all the stuff that you um, learn, all the experiences and you know the knowledge and the wisdom that you got in corporate America and repackage that to be able to, to deliver it into the world in a very different kind of way. And that different kind of way is where the, the concept of the place to soar came from. And I intentionally define it as a social enterprise because a social enterprise is an, a business that exists not just for uh, making money or being profitable, but also to have a social impact. So everything that I do is related to me being able to have some sort of social impact. And so from a coaching perspective, cause that's the center of, of what I do um, under the place to soar is my coaching practice. And that whole entire thing is around cultivating change and it's helping people to kind of um, remove barriers. It's helping people to kind of understand you are uniquely created. You've got this incredible potential and it's inside of you. And part of what I do as, as a coach is through this process of helping people to um, adopt uh, personal development and uh, daily growth in their lives on a regular basis. And they're constantly growing towards something different. Your enthusiasm just oozes out <laughs> over this screen. I just love it. So, um, and, and, I, and I have read your work before and it, it, you can just hear your voice and passion come through it. And I, I just love it. So you know what? Um, I know that, I mean, where can we get a copy of your stories or, cause you have another book actually. Um, uh, I have it right here. I wanna <laughs> see Lainey's house. I yeah. wanna see Lainey's house. I wanna see, oops, my oops. thing's acting a little weird. I wanna see Lainey's house. Um, this book, this is like my pride and joy book. And I say that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's my story. It is my story and my voice. Um, some of the things that happened to me when, um, when I was very young as a five-year-old, that was a very, very traumatic, uh, time of life for me. And this book is sort of like a culmination of, of me growing and changing and, um, moving out of uh, that, that traumatic space that I was in, the guilt, and, you know, I went through the cutting and, you know, all of that to be able to stand today and proclaim that I am a liberated woman. When I wrote that book, I knew absolutely nothing about publishing or marketing. All I knew was I, I had to get this book out. So the way I look at that book, that book was like a home birth, you know, and then now that I'm I'm a, I'm a bona fide author. I have some bestsellers under my belt and all of that. So now I understand the publishing and the marketing and all of that. But that book was a defining moment in my life. And it's available um, on Amazon, my author page on Amazon. Um, but I also will send out uh, signed copies if somebody's interested in a signed copy. And the place to soar.com is a place to go. I have this little thing called bookshelf and all of my books and things are listed there. So the place to soar.com and just look for bookshelf. Love it. And uh, absolutely for anyone listening right now or watching uh, and you're, you're getting that same vibe from <laughs> Anita that you know, she walks her talk and she's just being that raw, vulnerable being, finding and owning her voice and putting it out there. These are, these are phenomenal stories and great stories to share. I can't think of a, much, a more better time than right now than to pick up a book and gift it away to somebody just with a private little note to, to pass mm. along, letting somebody know that you know, I, I see you keep going, you know, encouraging them to keep going, keep that resilience going. Here's some, you know, here's a story of resilience for you to know that you're not alone. So Anita, I want to really thank you for putting your heart and soul into paper. It takes a lot of guts and courage to do what you did, uh, especially in that independent, that full, your life story, basically, that was very raw of you to do that just to serve others. So um, 
through all of this, through everything, what is something that you would like to leave with the listeners today? Maybe words of wisdom, Mm -hmm. maybe advice. What would you like to leave? Yeah, so I created this thing called Six Keys to Nurture, Grow, and Empower Your Life. And the number one key is know yourself. And I'm not talking about knowing yourself in relation to other people or your career or all of your accolades and all of your awards and all of that. But I mean, in the core of who you are as a human being, know yourself, understand what your strengths are, understand uh, what are your thoughts. I was talking earlier about how, you know, in humanity, everything that we do, we create and, um, and, and, and all of that, it comes from within us. And so I think it's just so incredibly important for people to know themselves to have that deep self knowledge of who you are, why are you on this planet? What is it that you have to contribute to humanity? And I believe that that is the true power of being human. Wow, that is fantastic. Anita, Anita Russell, the woman you need to know, absolutely follow her. You're on social media everywhere, right, Anita? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'm everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, stay connected to her, theplacetosoar.com. Yes. Uh, check her out. Check out her work. Anita, I want to really thank you. and Thank you again for opening your heart and, and, and just sharing with others and, you know, truly making this world a better place and marching so your grandson doesn't have to. Yes. So thank you very much. And thank you to all our listeners today. I hope you in, enjoyed uh, meeting Anita. Go connect with her. Go get to know her. Go get her book uh, and share it and pass it along. Thank you very much for joining us. And we look forward to connecting with you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.